Okay, so we're doing thermodynamics notes today. Um, this is all conceptual. There's no math, which is kind of a break for you. So, okay, so we talk about terminology first. There's thermal energy. Thermal energy is the total kinetic energy of all atoms in a substance. Okay, and temperature is the um, average kinetic energy of atoms in a substance. So notice that's different. Total and average are different, okay? Total, this depends on mass. Average, this doesn't depend on the mass or the amount because it's an average of all of the energy. Um, so if you had like a big cup of water, of water or a little cup of water um, at the same temperature, the big cup has more thermal energy than the little cup. But temperature is a measure of the average, so they can both have the same temperature. Heat is the transfer of kinetic energy between substances at different temperatures. Um, heat always travels from the hot thing to the cold thing. Always, always, always. It can't travel from cold to hot because technically there's no such thing as cold. Cold is just a feeling. But it'll travel from the thing with more thermal energy to the thing with less thermal energy. It just, uh, uh, different temperatures, not thermal energy. The thing with higher temperature will flow heat into the lower temperature thing. Um, okay, specific heat capacity. This is the amount of energy um, required scooch that up to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Um, so Hopefully you remember this from last year in chemistry. You did a bunch of calculations with it. We're not gonna do calculations with it, but you still have to know the conceptual stuff. So this really should be review. Um, whether you participated in it during the pandemic or not kind of depends on how much of a review it is. If you didn't do any of it, then this is brand new information to you. And I'm sorry, but I'm gonna blow right through it. You can slow it down or pause it if you need to, and you might wanna go back and review your chemistry stuff if you don't understand this because it is based on numbers, high and low numbers. So if you have um, high specific heat, that means it requires lots of energy to change the temperature. So high specific heat things are considered insulators and examples of insulators would be water, plastic, rubber, um, glass. There's lots of them, but you get that. Those are examples, okay? Um, if something has very um, low specific heat, then that means it requires less energy to change the temperature. These would be considered conductors. Okay, and these, the examples of these, these are basically um, all metals. All metals are good conductors of heat, okay? Um, and then we have this thing based on specific heat as well called thermal expansion. Uh, 
basically materials expand when heated okay so things with a low specific heat um, expand more um, because they um, they can have a greater temperature change quickly because they have a low specific heat doesn't require much energy to change them oops okay there we go hopefully you got all that if not pause moving on all right so let's talk about the laws of thermodynamics there are four laws that you must know yes the first one is not the first it is the zeroth which is stupid, but um, I didn't make them. Um, but anyway, so objects at the same temperature are in thermal equilibrium. Okay. So what does that mean? So thermal um, equilibrium means they're at the same temp. So they have the same average kinetic energy, okay? Um, heat flows from high energy, which means a high temp, to low energy, which means a low temp. Okay. There are three methods of heat transfer that you must know. Okay, so this is how heat is transferred. Okay, so one is conduction. And this is when heat flows due to direct contact, which means it has to be touching something, okay? Second one is called convection. And this is when heat flows due to fluids, so fluid um, fluid currents. So um, the only things that are fluid are going to be um, liquids and gases. So conduction is typically direct content. You have to touch it. That's going to be solids and liquids mainly. Convection is fluid currents, so the only things that are fluid are um, liquids and gases. And so an example of this might be um, if you've ever seen a lava lamp. That'd be a good example of convection heat by fluid currents. Um, okay. And the third one is radiation. And this is um, heating something by using electromagnetic waves. Okay, um, so examples of this would include the sun, the sun heats the earth by electromagnetic waves, um, fire, if you're sitting next to a campfire. Um, electromagnetic waves do not require a medium, so this can happen, it doesn't matter if it's a solid, liquid, or gas, or if it flows through a vacuum, it can still radiate. So um, radiation doesn't require a medium. Conduction requires touch, so that would be solids and liquids. Convection requires fluids, so that would be liquids and gases. Radiation doesn't require any medium at all. It can just radiate. All right, that's the zeroth law and the methods of heat transfer. And then we have the first law. 
First law is the um, law of conservation of energy. Okay, so this one's simple. You've already heard it. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. but can change forms. That's all, that's all. Okay, the second law is the, uh, it, I call it the entropy law, but it basically states uh, the universe naturally moves towards greater entropy. Okay, and we're not all in AP chemistry, so let's talk about what entropy means. So entropy, this is the, um, well, it's a couple of things. It's the amount of disorder in a system, and it's used um, it's used as a predictor, so it's also the probability that a certain state of matter, that is, will occur. So like solid, liquid, or gas. Um, so the amount of disorder in a system, it basically increases in the universe. The universe is messy. It's like if you go home every day and you just, like I drop my sweater and my purse at the door, I throw my shoes off, and if I wear a different pair of shoes the next day and a different sweater and um, different, sh different purse, whatever, and I keep doing that all week long, I'll have a pile of crap at the front door. And that's basically causing disorder. Okay, so in order to reverse that, I would have to input work. So the universe doesn't necessarily do that type of work to create order, it only creates disorder over and over and over. So the universe is constantly expanding as a result of this disorder. Okay. So that's kind of what that means. So really, what's the big takeaway from the second law is entropy. If entropy increases, disorder increases. Um, which particles are going to create more disorder? Those are the ones that move. So in order from, um, from low to high entropy. So the lowest entropy state is gonna be a solid. And so that will have less entropy than liquids, which will have, I'm running out of ink, which will have less entropy than gases. So gases have the highest entropy of the three states of matter that occur naturally on Earth. We don't really talk about plasmas, not in this level, okay? All right, and then we have the third law. The third law is the absolute zero law. So as temperature approaches absolute zero, so does entropy. Okay, and so what is absolute zero? Okay, because we're not all in AP chemistry. So absolute zero, it's zero kelvins, but it's also the theoretical point where all molecular motion
stops. Okay, so if all molecular motion stops, then you have zero kelvins, which is the lowest temperature you can possibly have. If you have zero kelvins, you have no average kinetic energy, so you would have zero kinetic energy. We've never achieved absolute zero on Earth, and it is theorized, of course, that if we do, that all kinetic energy will stop, and it could create something, I don't know, like a black hole or... I don't know. I have no idea. Nobody really knows. It's just a theory. But we'll see. I'm sure somebody will do it one day. Maybe you. Maybe not. Um, anyway, that's all of thermodynamics notes. Have a great day. Make sure you do your homework. Your homework is uh, on the thermo stuff is all conceptual, which is what this, these notes were. And then the rest of it should be review questions on um, work, power, and conservation of energy. Good luck. Have a great day.